in the world of horology, which is telling time or timing devices, the sundial goes back to over 500 B.C. And in those days, um, we find that people also used what was called water clocks and also sand clocks, which was, you know, like hourglasses and things of that nature, too, and uh, other devices. And the technology back then was very primitive, but it was uh, fairly effective as well. Sundials worked really well also. And uh, so if you want to study sundials, the study of sundials is called uh, nomenics, I think. Nomenics. So we'll take a look at this sundial because it's kind of an interesting design. I think some people like to see how this works or how it works. Or, and this is a reproduction of an older style. And these right here are very inexpensive. Uh, I think you can find them on eBay for maybe $15 to $20 on eBay. And uh, it's a conversation piece too, as we're doing now, I guess. Okay, well, let's take a look at this one here now. I made a video also on making a sundial out of a pie plate and also being able to find directions from east to west uh, with the idea of making the sundial too. So the sundial can be very useful if you follow the shadows of the sundial too to get your directions east and west. And so you can look at that video if you want to know more about how to set up a sundial and so forth. Now this right here is a reproduction of an antique type of design sundial. And it's got about five moving parts on it, I believe. You don't generally see these type of sundials uh, very much. So you may have seen uh, a sundial that looked like this and it looked very complicated, very confusing. But really it's, it's not if you study a little bit about sundials and how they work, they're pretty much pretty much basic in one way. Now on this one right here, and I'll just show it to you because it's, it's, it's a pretty sundial to me. And at the bottom of it here, and it has uh, four screws right here, which are used to level it up. So you can level the base of it up here. So that's what that's for. It has a compass on the inside of it too. And it has a, a uh, latitude degree uh, marker on it as well. And so we kind of open it up right here. This right here comes up and maybe you can see the uh, numbers on this right here. I'll get that glare. It starts off like at zero right here and goes all the way to 50 down here. And that's where your latitude is. And this base plate right here will pull up. So you'd put here in Georgia where I'm at, it's about 33 degrees latitude. So I pull this base plate up all the way up here to 30 degree mark. And that's close enough. And then in the center right here, we have a uh, nomen, what's called a nomen. And the nomen is, uh, is really what causes your shadow to appear. And that flips up. And uh, that's kind of a pretty design right there to me of a nomen. And... You can kind of see the hand of the uh, compass. Down here you can see the compass hand moving around a little bit. So on our parts right here that move, we got these screws right here. We've got our latitude right here uh, that comes up with our 50 degrees. We've got a gnomon here uh, in the center. And when you pull up the gnomon, make sure that it's dead center. Okay, it can't be leaning like this right here and expect to get a good reading of shadows. It, it has to be as straight as you can get it, okay? And this part right here uh, will pull up 
we'll pull it up to 30 right here, which would be our latitude. It's important to get the correct latitude, okay? And so that would be set right there. You'd have your gnomon vertical right here. You have it set on the base right here. You have that base set at 30 uh, degrees or, or 33 degrees. And the next thing that you would do would be to turn your compass so that the needle points north. Because what's, what you're going to do is line up north uh, with your gnomon, okay? And that's going to be important. And I think one thing that I mentioned this, well, you see the, the needle bouncing around. I can pull this right here, and that'll freeze it so it doesn't move at all. Not much point in doing that, except if you're traveling or something like that, you don't want it bouncing around. So, and maybe you can see that compass right there. I know it's got a lot of glare. But it's nicely done. I'm going to pull this back down to 30 degrees. Okay, so that's at 30 degrees. Now we release, slide this right here, and release the compass hand. And you see how it jiggles. That shows you there's not a lot of friction on that, so it's free to move, uh, you know, north. Okay, we've got the gnomon here pointing due north uh, with the compass hand, okay? So, number one, level your base plate up best you can with these screws. Number two, pull up your latitude degree marker right here. Remember this part right here with the zero to 50 degrees. And pull up your base plate here to that 33 degrees and make sure that your uh, gnomon here is vertical. It's not leaning to the right or left a little bit at all. Just as, as straight up as you can get. Okay. So with the gnomon pointing the same direction as the north right here on your compass, then you're ready to start telling time with it, okay? So it's going to cast a shadow on the numbers. And um, if you want to study sundials, because they make all kinds of sundials, hundreds of different types of sundials, it seems like out of all kinds of material, from wood to stone to concrete to all kinds of precious metals. And this side over here, let's see if you can read that. Now, these are Roman numerals right here, and it starts off uh, with at 4 a.m. right here. That's a, an I and a V, which is 4, right? And then a V right here is 5, and then, and then 12 is here. And then the Roman numerals go I here is 1, then I 2 is 2 o'clock, and then 3 I's there is 3 o'clock. It goes all the way to 8 o'clock here, a, a V and 3 I's. So your shadow is coming from the sun and casting a shadow somewhere on this face right here. And you just see where the shadow is at. Once you set it up, you can also tell, you know, your um, longitude also with uh, devices similar to this right here as well. So... Um, you see, it's just really a neat looking type of sundial. And since you've got a compass, you can find your way around. If you go back, you know, 100 years, you had, you, a compass was really, you know, something you would really need to keep from getting lost. And a sundial would give you your time. 
And another thing, I guess what I'm thinking about, daylight saving time will throw this off one hour. So either you got to add an hour, take an hour off of this, depending on how you've set it up originally, okay? So you have to keep that in mind. And another thing I don't think people think about, now everything changes once you pass the equator. Everything above the equator, shadows will go this way. That'll be north. Things below the equator are going to go the other way. The shadows will go that way, back, back and forth. But finding true north uh, is another thing you can do uh, with the shadows. If you mark the shadows, say, from the morning time to, say, like 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., you'll see that the shadows are way out here, and they start to come in closer and closer and closer to your compass, okay? And when the sun is directly overhead, the shadow may be really short. And then as, as the hours go by, the shadow gets longer and longer and longer. Well, that short point is going to be where true north is, okay? If you don't have a compass. And there's a multiplication you can use finding that short distance right there and multiplying that uh, times, uh, well, in Georgia, I think it'd be like 5.1 5 hours or something like that to get your, uh, la your latitude, I mean your longitude. So there's just a lot of things you can do with this, uh, with a compass, if you know how to work them and how to use them. So, okay, to recap real quickly, this model compass right here is really, um, really neat. And again, the dial goes from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. right here. I don't know who can see anything at that time unless you're higher up on your latitude. Your uh, gnomon here, which gives you your shadow, can be made of a lot of different things right here. Make sure that's perfectly vertical. Vertical. That has to be perfectly vertical. Right here, you've got your degrees from zero to 50. And you raise your base plate. Here in Georgia, it's 33 degrees on latitude, which is your elevation up and down from north to south. So you raise this plate up so that it is uh, at 33 degrees. Secondly, you make sure that uh, when your compass needle stops moving, if that's pointing north, then you turn, when it points north, true north, then you turn your numbing here so that it's pointing with your needle directly north, okay? If you don't do that, it's not gonna work right. So you got your latitude set at 30 degrees. You got your gnomon pointing north with your compass needle, which I know it's not doing that right now, but the way I have it set, so maybe you can see it. And this right here is perfectly vertical and uh, you will be ready to go. And if you mark the shadows for an hour, like every 15 minutes, the shadow that you get here will be on the ground or it will be on the table. If you mark it with a marker at the very end of that shadow, the very end of the shadow, mark it with a marker every 15 minutes. You can draw a line through it and that will be east over here, almost dead east. And the other end of the line will be pointing almost dead west. So you have your directions too. A lot more can be said about that, of course. So anyway, just thought you might find this interesting to see this type of sundial. And they make hundreds of different types of sundials. And some are very elaborate. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Gary J.